Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy from Jeremy's World 10 and today we are going to have a ton of fun. We're going to compare two little RVs. These are both 21 foot RVs. We're going to take a look at the inside, the outside and which one's better. Or is it better than a Sprinter van? Mm, so many questions. Let's try to answer these questions in today's video. We're going to have some fun. Let's go. All right, so we all know that little vans, little houses, and little RVs are extremely popular in 2022. And we want to compare these two 21-foot RVs. Look at what some of the amenities are in them. They're two completely different floor plans. And my question is, is are these better than a Sprinter van? Maybe for the dollar spent on them, are they more capable? And I mean, are you gonna have more fun enjoying these RVs? Let's go take a look at each one of these. What's done to the outside? What's they, the floor plan is inside? Come on, let's go. All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna compare two very different RVs, yet very similar in length. So the first one is gonna be the Sunseeker by Forest River. This is a 215 OLE which I don't know the OLE breakdown, but really it's gonna come in at about 21 and a half feet. We're gonna compare that to this BT Cruiser. All right, so and on this BT Cruiser, this is gonna come in at 21 foot as well. So you notice the first thing in this, as we look at this BT Cruiser, is the do rear entry door is going to be all the way in the rear, which is gonna make it for a very different floor plan on the inside. So the first thing I notice on this is going to be the reduced amount of space for putting gear. I know that that's always a big thing for me personally in my RV is between my me, my wife, my kids, there's always a ton of gear that I want to take with me on those camping trips. And I have a 24B and I feel like I always need more space. So not a ton of space on the outside, on the passenger side. Now you will notice one thing, this is really big. When you're looking for an RV, I noticed that even my 24B by Jayco has this. So it has these new style of windows that do not have a frame. Now what I don't like about these windows is they only open up a couple inches. Now let's go take the Sun Seeker look at those windows, how much more they open and God, they're gonna just let that air come in, it's nice. So when we come back to the Sun Seeker, you're gonna notice that it's going to have more storage on the outside which is always going to be a plus. Now, the other thing that's great is you can see that this is a full frame window as well. That window is actually gonna slide all the way open and that is a big plus because even as we come back over to this BT Cruiser on the passenger side, you're gonna notice these same uh, frameless windows. I'm just not a big fan. I would be curious to see if any of you guys have done upgrades on your windows, maybe remove these, or maybe I'm just completely missing something on how to open these more. I don't think I am, so I would love to hear what you guys think, which window you prefer on the outside of, you know, on your RV. Now, I will tell you one other thing. Before we jump to the inside of either one of these RVs, both of these outfit have been outfitted by Weld Tech Designs and the crazy guys over there. And some of those outfit, um, some of those things are going to include things like they blacked out the hubcaps. We have also run a larger tire on the back of this compared to a normal stock tire, but both of these are going to have the same size lift kit. The biggest thing that I notice is going to be the benefit in these lift kits is the additional ground clearance because if you have the levelers on your RV, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is rip them off. Now, depending on the part of the country that you live in, I always hear that you know wild animals are running across the road and here in California, we just don't get that because we've pretty much built houses everywhere. Now what is really cool is on the front of this RV that we have right here is you're gonna notice that they did do a completely custom front bumper. What's nice about this front bumper is it's going to allow you to put a winch in it and it also has a front receiver mount. It's also going to include light mounts. Um, another thing that they've done on this is also blacked out the front grille and either one of these RVs, it looks really nice because with the black windows, the black window frames, and of course the black mirrors, all of the components look really nice. Now, as we jump back over to the Sunseeker RV, they've done the same thing on here as well, taking the chrome grill, changing it out to black, and then keeping it much more simpler on here, getting rid of the chrome bumper and making it black as well. 
So a lot of really, really cool components that have done on the outside of these RVs as far as the suspension. And if you wanna know more information about this, I will put some links down below, as well as uh, go and check out Weld Tech Designs. They make some really cool stuff. Yeah, we do, you know. But anyways, guys, really we wanna talk about the inside of this because, you know, the floor plan, how many people does it sleep? Because I wanna know, like, can I sleep more people than a Sprinter van? Do I have more room in there? That's the big question. Let's go check these out. All right, guys, so we're gonna head inside the Sunseeker. Let's check out where the magic happens. Man, first thing I noticed here though, guys, is we do do a lot of the steps on them right here. I really wish that this had a step on it because, man, that's, a, that's quite a jump. All right, so first impressions when I come in this Sunseeker RV is, wow, there is a lot of room in here. And when I compare this to a Sprinter van, I know that no Sprinter van is going to have the uh, room that something like this has. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to notice is the massive amount of space over the cab that we're going to have. What's nice about that is you're like, well, I don't need an RV that's going to sleep six. And technically, that's what this RV is going to do. And we'll get into all those sleeping arrangements. But this is also a great place for gear to just be stored because you know that you always want more. But if you don't, heck, it's great. Two adults are going to be able to sleep up there, no problem. And as we work our way around this, a lot of nice features is also the front chairs. If they're going to be on swivels, that's always going to be a plus. What I do really like is this large booth style seating. And usually, yep, you can even take this and rotate this to have it go either way. So it can extend out into the walkway and you may say, well, I don't really want my table extending out into the walkway. Well, that's not a problem because this does have a 10 foot slide on the side of it. This whole wall is going to slide out, giving you even more room in this living area, which I don't think any Sprinter vans have a slide. I don't know, maybe that's a, a goal we gotta find out. Nice big booth here though. It's going to easily seat four or five people, depending on if you have kids and how small they are. I really like this. I have a booth in my 24B and absolutely love it. So again, guys, you're gonna notice that this window is going to open up all the way. It's really going to increase the amount of air coming in. And what's great too, is the slide opens up as well. So if you wanna throw stuff at your kids, it's easy target practice, right? So this is really nice. I like this. This is probably one of the best things about this RV when it comes to allowing, letting airflow in. That is going to be a big plus. So the next thing we're gonna look at is you do have a smaller kitchen area, which not a problem at all. I mean, you do have the cutting board that's gonna go up in the top. I mean, this is you know gonna give you enough room. I guess if you do need additional prep space, you could run it on the side, but you're also gonna have the side top here, which is gonna give you a little bit more counter space as well. Definitely a big plus. Well, Marcus is sweating his butt off. We're gonna go ahead and switch spaces and check out the rear of this RV. So back here, you're gonna still have a nice queen size bed. Again, what I'm really gonna like is that window that's going to be in the back and really allow that fresh air to come in. Now, another thing that I do like what they did in this is maximize the space in here, putting the sink on the outside. To me, what's nice about that is you could still have somebody being in the bathroom. Me having small kids, I feel like my kids are always going to the bathroom. And then they're like, oh, I can't brush my teeth. Caden's in the bathroom. So Kendall can still be out here brushing her teeth. Caden can be going to the bathroom or maybe it's me sitting on the pot. But speaking about bathrooms, I do like this. You're still going to have a lot of space in here. I mean, you're not gonna find this in a Sprinter van with this much of a toilet and a shower in a small confined spot. Now guys, keep in mind, the slide out is not out. There's a ton of room in this, man. Why would you ever choose a Sprinter van? I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, guys. This is really awesome. I really like the inside of this, but we're not done. Let's go take a look at the inside of the BT Cruiser and see how um, it rates compared to the inside of the Sunseeker. 
All right, guys, so we're heading inside the BT Cruiser. You know, the Sunseeker was pretty awesome. Let's see how this compares in this tiny RV shootout. Now, what's really nice is going to be that this does have those steps. It's still a little bit of a step up, but not nearly as bad as the other one. Um, I, I like this, but of course, that's due to having these both have lift kits on them. Let's go check out the inside of this. All right, so as I come in this, this is a completely different floor plan, maybe not necessarily for the larger family. So the first thing I'm going to notice is it does have a little bit more countertop space in here, and it does have the insert for the sink as well. That's really nice. It's not going to have the fold up spot, but it does have a lot of drawers in here, which is going to be good. Now you will notice that in the back of this, the bathroom was all in the rear and it's all going to be one thing. You're going to have the small sink in here as well as your shower and your toilet. Still though, like I could sit in here, no problem use the facilities, I'm good to go. Now I will tell you guys, if you have a BT Cruiser, you may want to look at um, upgrading your spare tire mount on the back of this, or at least changing out the hardware, which you can do through this panel right here on the back, because usually it's just a bolt, it just spins, it's bad news. Um, and uh, we fixed it on this one and maybe we'll just have to do a complete video on how to fix that. So as we come into the main living portion of this, you're gonna see, it's like a restaurant. I love it, right? That's what Marcus said at least. So you do, it's just going to have two really big couches, which is going to be nice. So now as we look at these windows, I wanna show you this. So the window is going to crank open. Now it still has the screen on there, but that's all you get is the airflow that's going to come underneath this not even going to get like you can't open it up you're not really going to get a good breeze in here i'm just really not a big fan of these rvs i have them on my jayco 24b i'm gonna have to figure out a new window to put in there i'm not a fan of this so what is going to be really nice is both of these couches are going to make into two separate beds of course, if you want to sleep with your significant other, I'm sure there's a way to make it one giant bed. Now, the next thing that you're going to notice is right behind us, you don't have another bed. Let's check that out. All right, so I'm sure that this would be really nice. My kids would love it. You do have the giant TV and entertainment center up in the front of this, which is going to be really nice. I do really like all of the gray seats in here, a little bit more high end of a seat as well, but that's really nice. Now you're going to lose all that storage space that you had in the Sunseeker, which is going to be a plus. So this is an RV that I would compare more to a Sprinter van, where it's only really going to sleep maybe two people, um, you know, three at the like max, I would say. Um, and that's what I feel like most Sprinter vans also do. You're gonna have the entertainment center up front and the bathroom in the back. You do have that nice size kitchen, which I don't know. We're gonna take a look at some Sprinter vans to see if they have that much space. So really, when it comes to a family, I'm gonna to have to lean more towards the Sun Seeker, I think. Um, and this is great for two people that just wanna get out and get away. Well, that was a lot of fun checking out these two RVs and really looking at some of the differences in floor plans, um, not only on the inside, but seeing like what they have as far as exterior storage as well. So the big thing takeaway from this is I'm going to say that I like the Sunseeker windows a lot better than the BT Cruiser. Now, if it was just me and my wife, I'm going to probably pick the BT Cruiser because I don't need all of the beds. However, I really like that booth in the Sunseeker. There's so many things that I kind of go back and forth on this. And of course, at the point in my life where I'm at, I have four kids, they're always coming with me. I realize, well, as cool as the BT Cruiser might be for just myself, it's probably not all that practical. However, I really love the lift kit, the front bumper, and just the manliness of this thing. It is a beast. But I'm probably, for me right now, in my current life situation, the Sunseeker is going to be more up my alley. That's why I have also have a 24-foot B, just a little bit bigger RV, but still the same kind of floor plan configuration. 
So I'm sure that there is things that I've missed in this video. This is kind of one of the first walkthrough comparison videos. If there is additional things that you guys would like to see in future videos, please leave comments below. Let me know what I missed and I will be sure to find another RV that we can walk through, that we can talk about, figure out the pros and cons. I'm here to help you guys on your RV and maybe just life experiences. I just want to have fun. I want you guys to have fun, guys. I'm Jeremy from Jeremy's World 10. I'll see you guys. See you guys around. Yep, that's what I'll do. Bye.